This video is going to be about proportions. Now, if you have spent some time with data before and you watched my video about summary statistics, you might have noticed that I left proportions out as an example. Now, that was intentional because I think proportions are just a specific case of a mean. And I'm reminding you here that the mean is just add up all the numbers and divide by however many numbers there are. I think proportions are a special case of that. And if you think of proportions as a special case of the mean, then it's my opinion, statistics here forward is quite a bit easier. It kind of collapses some different branches that a lot of people like to uh, follow for the world of statistics. They think you have to differentiate these two kinds of numbers, when in reality, if you just think of them all as means, you kind of, you know, limit the number of options of things you have to work with in the world of statistics. So I think this is an abstraction, but a simplifying abstraction once you kind of get over the idea. So we'll do a whiteboard example. And remember, whatever I call this is the whiteboard. Whatever we have in front of us now is my whiteboard. Uh, we'll do a quick whiteboard example. Then we're going to dive into R. We're going to learn how to create variables in R and vectors. So I can just show us a simple example, and I'll try to mimic the example we do on the whiteboard in R so that it's really kind of uh, easy and intuitive at first. And then we'll give a more detailed example of proportions in R. So here we go. A specific case of the mean gives you proportions. What is that specific case? If all your data consist of zeros or ones, then the mean will give a proportion or a percentage. I'm going to treat those as synonyms here. Let's see why. So imagine you had a data set, really silly data set, that consisted of 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. I don't really care what the numbers are. So you have, let's see, okay, six numbers, three of which are zeros and three of which are five, uh, ones. <laughs> that was silly. So if we add up all the numbers, 0 plus 1 is 1, because 0 doesn't do anything, plus 0 is still 1, plus 1 plus 1 is 3, plus zero is three. So the proportion here is literally just add up all the numbers, three divided by however many there are. And that just happens to be the fraction three sixth or the decimal 0 0.5. But you see, all we did was treat that sequence of numbers as a mean and we got out of it a proportion. If we have only zeros and ones and we calculate the mean, we will get out a proportion. Means and proportions are the same things if you have just zeros and ones. So really the trick with proportions is to understand what in your data set can give you zeros and ones. And as long as you have zeros and ones, imagine we had a different data set with all ones, the biggest you could get is six out of six or one. The largest you could get is something like 100% of your data is ones. And the smallest you could get, and I'll ask you to think of how this can happen on your own, the smallest you could get for a proportion if all you had was zeros and ones is zero. What would your data set need to look like in order to get a proportion of zero? How many zeros would you have? How many ones would you have? OK, I'm going to leave that one to you all. And we will jump into R. Now remember, as we get into R, we're going to start with creating variables and then looking at vectors and then building on the examples we just had such that we can work up to a more complex example about proportions in R. So the classic example to create a variable in R is let's assign to the variable x, the number 2. So now we have a variable named x that holds the value 2. And this code here that we have reads like this. It goes x left arrow 
but that's literally less than shift comma dash less than is the two buttons shift comma that's one and then dash the button to the right of zero and then you can put two and if you want you could change x to be any kind of fancy number you want and every time you do this you will see here in the global environment this is the first time we're really paying attention to this upper right um, window pane here we will see in the global environment we have created a variable x and it now holds the value 5.3234 whatever right and if we update that number you will see that the global environment updates so all this upper right window pane is telling us is that we have created a variable named x and it holds the value 3. okay so that was our example on variables you can really create variables with any name you want as long as it does not start with numbers, has no spaces, and no special characters. So if you wanted Luke Skywalker to be a new variable, you totally could. And that's just a new variable named Luke Skywalker. You can be as clever as you want with your variable names, but I caution you, don't be too clever. Okay, so that was our example on variables. There is a type of variable built into R named vector. Vectors, you should think of as a column, a single column of a data frame. So in fact, we've already looked at different variables built into R. For instance, a data frame is a variable type in R. So we have kind of now we're playing across these three different types of variables in R. We have, generally, there are variables, and they can take on simple kind of letter-based names with no spaces or special characters. We have data frames as a type that is a two-dimensional structure. The rows hold observations, and the columns hold variables. And we now have a third type of variable in R, which is named vector. And you should think of it as a single column of a data frame. So that is really a data frame is multiple vectors put together, kind of stacked horizontally. So to create a vector, and I'm just going to overwrite the variable named x here, you would go x left arrow c for concatenate. And then you would tell it in a comma separated list all of the numbers you want and it's this type of variable in r specifically a vector that you can calculate the mean of or the median of or the standard deviation of or the interquartile range of it is actually of vectors that we are calculating all of these summary statistics on. Okay, this was a lot of uh, kind of buildup here, but the point is we're getting back to if we had a vector that consisted of 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and we calculated a mean on that, indeed we would get out a proportion. The largest this number could be is 1, as long as all of our data are zeros and ones, and the smallest this number could be is zero, as long as the vector we had contained only zeros and ones. So really the question is, what types of values can we create zeros and ones from? Let's try another more complex example. I'm going to create um, really odd vector named y, and then I'm going to ask which of the values of y are less than 5. And what we get out is a new vector. In fact, it is a new vector such that you could assign it to a variable name. You now have a vector named z that consists of false, 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 because 5, 6, 7, 8 from the vector y are not less than 5. And then true, 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 true 
Did I get enough trues in there? Whatever, you guys get the idea. Because the values in y, 2, 3, 4, 1, are indeed less than 5. So you see this new vector z has as many elements in it as does y, and it consists of trues and falses for whether or not the values in y are less than 5. Okay, here's one to break your brain. Turns out trues and falses on most computers are just zeros for false and one for true. So in fact, you can just calculate the mean of that vector z that consists of four zeros and then four ones, where the zeros and ones look like false and true, respectively. That was a lot, but that was the simple example. Let's pick out another vector that we have seen before. The vector diet, and here I'll prove to you that it's a vector. Well, that just backfired on me. Okay. Let's pick out another vector diet. We can ask which of the elements of the diet for these chickens weights from this data frame chick weight are equal to one. So let's try chick weight dollar sign diet. That means extract the vector diet from the data frame chick weight. Are which values of the vector diet are equal to one. And what we'll get out is a vector of the length of diet from the data frame chick weight of trues and falses. So if we wanted to calculate the proportion of chickens who received diet one, we could just calculate the mean of that new vector. And it turns out about 38% of the chickens in the data frame chick weight received diet equal to one. That is two equal signs there to ask which are true and which are false, which diets are equal to one and which diets are equal to two. It's pretty simple then to get the proportion of chickens who received diet to about 21%. The proportion of chickens who received diet three is about is exactly the same as the proportion that received diet two, and all the way up to four. I know this stops at four because when I earlier printed out just the first six elements of the variable diet in the data frame chick weight, it told me the levels, that is the values the variable can take on, are one, two, three, and four. So here is all of the proportions for the chickens who received each of these diets. Now, sometimes it's really helpful to ask just a mean for a specific diet. Sometimes you want all four, but you don't want to go through the mean of every one of these. So it turns out here's our last little bit of R that if you create a table, of the counts, this is analogous to a bar chart, of the counts of the number of chickens that received each diet, you can then calculate on that a proportions table, and you can get out exactly the proportions we developed ourselves earlier. So the takeaway of this lecture is proportions are just a specific case of means when you have zero and one data. By asking which of the observations in a specific variable are equal to some value, we can create a vector of zeros and ones concealed as trues and falses. When we have a vector of zeros and ones, we can just calculate a mean on it to receive a proportion. Proportions are just a specific case of means when all of the elements in your vector are zeros and ones.